you guys another DIY Saturday. Two scarves, three shirts, and a coat. You know what? All that aside, this is going to be the sexiest DIY you've seen in a really long time. So stay tuned for the video. Super excited, guys! I got a beautiful round table, perfect scale, perfect size, perfect as is in terms of condition but i think you're going to see it change a little bit have a modern twist for the dining room redo i am in the process of starting a diy project for this table this table i bought with a um, grouping of chairs for a gr very great price at one of my favorite um, reused furniture stores here in montreal but i don't like its finish it's dated and i need something a little more modern so we're going to use one of my favorite products to refinish which is rust-oleum uh, black matte finish interior exterior paint we need to prep this for painting Good morning, Montreal. We are in my dining room for the third and final coat of the base of this dining table. I have an artist brush so that I can follow through on the details in the base. And then now that the top has been sanded and wiped clean, we are going to roll with a foam roller the three finished coats that are required for the top of it. In real time, uh, it's been about four days since this project started. I'm super excited because this weekend this project has to be done because I have an amazing artist coming for dinner. So let's get this party started. I think that is the money shot and things in the, <laughs> the rear look larger than they appear. <laughs> It's time to put three coats on the top of this table. So I'm using a foam roller and a four inch tray and I'm going to roll out uh, three times and let each coat dry before I apply a another coat. Once that's done, we're going to move on to the walls of this dining area because I'd like to get something on the walls before we finish the detailing on the top of this table. Cool. in DIY Central or one of the hearts of my home which is the dining area off the kitchen and it needs a big redo for the guests that are coming for dinner. So I have prepped the walls as you can see behind me and I have taken away um, some of the fixtures and I'm getting this for these walls ready for some deep color. What you're going to see is something like really sexy and really dramatic. Uh, it is a small space. This space is about six, almost exactly six foot wide by eight foot four. So there really isn't a lot of space here. So uh, I'm going to do a few tricks to make this space look larger than it is, but also accommodate as many guests as I can around my table. So there are a few challenges in this space other than the square footage. There is no central light fixture in the dining room there is one kind of centered within the dual space of the kitchen and dining area so although that is a challenge it also is a blessing because i can create a hanging fixture over the table where i'm going to position the table which wouldn't be centered in the room anyway So now that I have uh, polyurethaned the walls, I, I want to add a 
kind of traditional yet modern uh, element. So you're really gonna like this. I'm getting some wood trim from Rona at the moment and I'm going to do a modern twist on some traditional paneling. So now that I've glazed the walls in kind of this high gloss luster, we're gonna put some matte finish trim on it in a modern styling. Let's get started. So I think it's gonna look super cool. So what I've chosen is about an inch uh, paintable pine and quite inexpensive because it is going to be painted with a bull nosed edge and we're going to use it twice in each application. The first application is the exterior box in which we're going to affix to the wall and then we're going to do a smaller interior box that echoes the exterior box. So definitely a more modern, more linear look. Now in traditional sense you'd probably see this molding much more ornate but that's not what I want to go with. Okay, now we're ready to get started. Now that I have um, all of my tools, there is one thing to take into consideration before you start. I have two walls that I need to panel and it's going to look the best if the reveal on the exterior of both walls is equal. And on the adjacent wall, I actually have uh, a wall mounted thermostat and a light switch. So if there wasn't a wall mounted thermostat or light switch on that wall. We could create any reveal we wanted and measure it out and put the molding on the wall. However, I wanna make sure that the reveal is the same for both areas that we're covering. So I wanna make sure that the molding isn't interrupted on the adjacent wall by that thermostat or that light switch. So it's gonna take me just in, uh, another few minutes to figure out what it is or how wide that reveal should be and then we'll start marking the walls. to get some black spray paint, matte finish for the gallery wall that is opposite the dining table. Here I am in front of the gallery wall in my dining space or my DIY space and you can see just how grand this gallery wall is. Now I've taken, my ceilings aren't very high, but because I've taken the art directly to the ceiling, you can see how dramatic it actually is and I'm a standard height guy. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, what I love about this gallery wall is not only it gives me the uh, opportunity to look at some of my art collection that I continue to curate, especially here in Montreal, but and my guests for that matter, as we often gather in the dining room. So it's a great space for you to do it if you are looking to put a gallery somewhere 
Think about where your guests are going to gravitate when you do have parties because it's a lovely backdrop for photographs and it's also a lovely conversation piece. So I collect them over time and although I have um, some professional wood frames in black and white, I wanted to unify them with more art. And I've done that using the aluminum frames and then spraying them all with black matte like you saw earlier. Now, what makes this collection a little bit avant-garde in comparison to um, other galleries you might have seen is a trick. So what I've done is carried and unified the frames around the center with color, but I've kept the two main featured artworks with ornate frames in the center. And in fact, this one has no art at all. So I love the frame so much that I actually wanted it to sing. And not only is it surrounded so that it is featured, but there's actually nothing in it. Oftentimes the framing is actually more expensive than the piece of art itself. So if you can find a great supplier like I have here, when you curate your own art collection over time, you can still have a dramatic wall while you introduce piece after piece. So I'm gonna show you some ways to do that in another episode, but I hope you can take away some of these tips from this. And of course, uh, here I'm featuring three Montreal artists, but uh, a Toronto artist who I really admire as well. And it's David McNeil who does uh, one-of-a-kind portraits uh, in a silkscreen style. So it's super cool. He's uh, it, totally amazing and I'm going to add a link to the video below. But also uh, a very famous Montreal artist who I'm so happy to have in my collection is Lise Tremblay. Uh, she is an amazing artist and I'm so happy to have one of her pieces. So she will always be on display in my gallery wall. So let's talk about the wall treatments for a minute, okay? Well, that's a wrap guys. I hope you take some of these ideas to your own space and if you have a space that you need help with or you need redecorating advice please feel free to reach me either here on the YouTube channel at my home our city or the Facebook page of the same name or mr.robert.bates on Instagram. If you're an artist and either want to have dinner with me and talk about your art or if you'd like to show me your process in studio feel free to reach out as well. And of course, if you think you belong in my gallery wall, I would love to hear from you. So from my home, our city, I'm Robert. Until next time, à tantôt, bisous. Now that's handsome.